Hello, welcome. My name is Chris Morgan. This is the fourth video in our Reactor Subtractive Synth how-to video series. In the last video, we added an ADSR envelope generator. In this one, in this video, we're going to add an LFO that's going to uh, be added to the pitch to yield what's called vibrato. So we will control click, built-in module, go down to the control signals LFO and envelope generator. Um, LFO and envelope, and we'll choose LFO. LFO is a low frequency oscillator that's different than these audio rate oscillators. These are meant to function in the audio rate 20 to 20,000 hertz. The LFO is meant to function at a sub audio rate from 0 to 20 hertz or so. So, as a result, they are much slower. You can see that they are red signals instead of black. Notice also that instead of having pitch, we have frequency input. So we just want to choose things instead of like MIDI note numbers 60, 61, which correspond to frequencies of around 260 hertz, or A above middle C, which is MIDI note 69, which corresponds to 440 hertz. These rates are just meant to be 1 hertz, 2 hertz. So we can quickly go down, uh, control click on each of the inlets for frequency, create control. For amplitude, which is also known as um, depth on a lot of synthesizers, we'll say create control. We're going to rename that. We'll also rename frequency to rate. And then width is very critical for how reactor does it. Width control, in theory, just gives us control over, for instance, like a pulse width. But we're going to see that that affects the triangle wave, skewing the triangle wave into a ramp wave up or down based on that width, as well as affecting the the symmetry of the pulse wave to make it a square wave or um, an up pulse or a pulse with a, a very short duty cycle. And it also skew the sine wave as well. Now the first thing to think about here is that we've got these three possible wave shapes coming out and we only really want one at a time. So we're going to create another panel object, a switch, just like we did for the wave shapes over here. So I'm going to scooch these over to give myself a little bit more room. And I will go back to the panel. So this is the second time you've seen the panel um, me reference the panel object. Control click, built-in module, panel, and switch. So there's all these things in the panel. We'll use many of them over the course of the, the semester, but really we'll use switch all the time. And, and some of them we will never really need to use, but switch. And you can see, you might have noticed inside the panel that there were things for faders, knobs, buttons but oftentimes we will get those automatically by control clicking on the inlets of objects. So we've got our switch here. Again, it comes with one inlet by default. We can drag the sign outlet into that. In order to get mo more inlets, we can, we can click on it and go to um, the function and add the minimum number of ports there. But the fastest way is to hold down the command key and drag from one outlet and it'll automatically create uh, create another inlet. We're going to use this piece of code over and over again, so it's critical to label it now. It's better to label it once and copy and paste it several times than to have to go through, if you have four instances of these LFOs, and then you have to go name it 12 times. So I have a choice here with pulse. I could call that square, which is a little more traditional. It doesn't really matter. And also with triangle, I could also call that ramp slash triangle. Again, it's going to be based on the fact that we can skew the symmetry of those wave shapes with this width control. And just the, what's great about using the control click to add these is that they automatically go to the right range of values. So if I look at click on frequency and look at my function, I can see that this goes from a range of uh, 0.1 hertz to 12 hertz, and I just know it's hertz because it's going into the frequency. With the amplitude, you can see, of course, it goes from 0 to 1. Now, in this case, that would give me uh, the 0 to 1 range of the amplitude, or depth, if I want to just rename that now, is great for amplitude, if I'm uh, using that to rescale amplitude for tremolo, which I'll do later. But the problem is the 0 to 1 amplitude is m basically multiplied by the positive one to negative one bipolar wave shape so now the output is plus one minus one that plus one minus one we're going to add that on to the note pitch so if I'm playing a above middle C it's note 69 
plus 1 means it's going to be ramped, it's going to be raised up to note 70, and minus 1 is going to be lowered down to 68. So I'll get a half step vibrato. A more traditional might be a whole step vibrato. So I like to use the depth to affect not only how much vibrato, but also just as an on off. So if I set the range of the depth to 0, there's basically no vibrato. But if I set it to 2, then it's going up a whole step and down a step. So I'm going to go ahead and set that, that range now under my max to 2. And now to combine the two things together. I would just simply use math. For affecting frequency, we're often adding things together. Later when we do amplitude, rescaling will always be multiplying. But just as a rule of thumb, for frequency, you're adding. And so there under math, add, there's all these math functions. And we use about half a dozen of them. <clears throat> so now I've got the regular math object. Take my pitch to there and take my LFO and add it to there. And now I have the, the tedious process of reconnecting all of these pitches to the output of the plus. Of course, skipping the noise because there is no pitch input there. But you can see how that fits together now. And when we go over to the panel, we can see that I've got all these these controls I just junked in there. I need to turn on the wrench and move those out over here so I can see them. There's the depth, there's the rate, which I'll rename, there's the switch to choose the wave shapes, and then there's the width. So I need to make a little bit more room here. I'll move my envelope generator over. I like to start with the switch for the wave shape, then maybe use depth next because that's affected with my on off switch and then set the frequency, the rate, and then the width. So it's sort of in order of importance. So I'll change the word switch to um, LFO shape. And we have ramp and triangle, which I need to fix that there. And depth, I will call, uh, depth is fine, yes, that's fine. But others might call it amount. But remember, the default was amplitude, which is technically what it was. Frequency, this is technically the frequency, but most synthesizers will call it rate or even speed. And then width, we can just leave its width because there's not really a good thing to say there, but it will hear that skewing now. So I will set this to zero depth, play a note, and we will hear after I turn off the wrench that there's going to be no effect. As I increase the depth or set, set a, a wave shape first, increase the depth. I start to hear the effect of that. I'll increase the rate. Um, the maximum depth I have set is two. So this is up a whole step and down a whole step. Uh, this is at one half step would be up a whole step and half, uh, up a half step and down a, ha a half step. Rate is four hertz, uh, one hertz. And again, this only goes up to 24. But if I wanted it to go faster, I could just go over to my values here. A lot of times synthesizers will have a maximum range of 24. You'll start to get into uh, frequency modulation synthesis at that point. You can hear some tones emerging. Now, to demonstrate the width control, I'll slow it down and I'll set it to ramp, although I could use this with, with sine as well. Notice that it's set basically at zero now. As I s turn it to one, it shifts the triangle wave shape symmetry to basically being a rising sawtooth wave. As I go to negative one, it becomes a down. So you can get some video game effects uh, that you might have heard a sound effect. Same thing with the square wave. As I set it to zero, it's a symmetrical square, just like a rectangle is a geometric shape and a square is a special type of rectangle with equal sides. The same thing, a pulse is the wave. It has a duty cycle, uh, the work cycle, the on and or off part. Um, but symmet symmetry wise, a square is just a, sp a special type of pulse wave. Equal up and equal down. As I skew it, I will have, you can hear, longer up than down and as I skew the other way it's a shorter on cycle 
Pawns pawn part of the cycle. And of course, again, as I take the depth down to zero, I'm basically turning it off. So I don't bother putting an off switch on my LFO shapes, although I could do that. But um, I just use the depth control down to zero, and it's off. So it's less screen clutter, which is very important when you're designing an interface. Next, we will use the same LFO to accomplish tremolo with the amplitude. 